In 2012, something happened in South Africa that forced many to question their support for the party of Nelson Mandela, the African National Congress, the ANC. A strike broke out in a platinum mine called Marikana. The mine workers had been waiting on a hill for management to come and negotiate with them. But it never happened. On the sixth day of the strike, the police used live ammunition to attack the strikers. Thirty-four mine workers were killed on that day, and many more were injured. Marikana was a turning point. I made a film about the massacre. I couldn't believe that under an ANC government, black mine workers had been killed by the police, simply for demanding better wages. I was just a child when my family was forced into exile by the apartheid regime. When apartheid was defeated, I returned to a free South Africa, full of hope and optimism. Oh, it was fantastic. I feel really great. A bit nervous, you know. Don't know really what to expect. And there's a lot of work to be done, and a lot of people to be seen. And I want to play my part in that process. The ANC fought the country's first democratic elections on a ticket of transforming the lives of black people. They promised decent housing, education, and other social rights that had long been denied. There was hope at last. The dignity of the black majority would be restored. But two decades later, the Marikana killings exposed a brutal side of the ANC government. Unhappiness with the government was rising. The majority had not been lifted out of poverty. Many blamed the ANC the beloved party that overthrew apartheid for failing to fix their problems. For me and many others, the question was, is the ANC still the party of the people? And if not, what would replace it? President Zuma's government has murdered our people. He has presided over the killing of our people, and therefore he must step down. Not even a perfect Julius Malema was the first politician to visit the miners after the massacre. He was a former president of the ANC Youth League, but had recently been expelled from the party. He encouraged the miners to carry on fighting and soon became a leadership figure in the miners' strike. Malema was about to dramatically change the political landscape of the country. As we're intervening in the, from Maragana to one community to the other, the people kept on saying, guys, open your political party. Open a party which will vote for. And we knew that uh, the demands of the Maragana workers were actually the demands of workers all over South Africa and that people were saying, we need an alternative. Malema launched his economic freedom fighters in Marikana with a keen eye on the general elections just months away. Tens of thousands of ANC youth left the ANC and joined Malema. Come 
and witness a birth of a child. Because today, a pregnant African woman is giving birth to a child. A child who is going to be born today and walk immediately. You must be very scared when a child gets born today and immediately shake your hand. Just months later, the economic freedom fighters stood in their first general election and won 6% of the vote. Malema Julius Silla. With 25 members of parliament, the EFF was overnight the third largest party. Those who are taking an oath. Malema and his new MPs dressed in workers' uniforms to remind people they would represent those the ANC had abandoned. And if it is an affirmation in the same language, I do. And that they were there to challenge the government over Marikana at every opportunity. Honorable Malema. Chair, when police reduce crime, you come here and say the ANC has reduced crime. And when police kill people, you don't want us to come here and say the ANC government has killed people. That is inconsistent, Honorable, uh, Malema. Honorable Chair. Honorable Malema, the instruction to you is withdraw the statement. I won't do that. I'm sorry, I won't do that. I will I ask you again, Honorable Malema, withdraw that statement. I maintain the ANC government killed people in Marigana. You leave me no choice but to ask you to leave the house. No problem. Thank you. You were the premier, son. Yes, I was the premier. You murdered people in Marigana. Make sure that the door is closed. Malema was a master of controversy. Even back when he was leader of the ANC Youth League, he was not someone you wanted to get on the wrong side of. And you know nothing about the In 2010, when a journalist pointed out that Malema owned a house in a wealthy area, he lost it. Don't come here with that white standing. Not here. You can do it somewhere else. Here you don't laugh. Uh, Chief, can you get security to remove this thing? Here? here you are in the wrong place. That's rubbish. And you can go out. Yeah, you can go out. Rubbish is what you have covered in that uh, uh, trouser. That is rubbish. That which you have covered in this trouser is rubbish. Okay? You are a small boy. You can't do anything. I didn't come here to be Come so out. Go out. Bastard. You bloody agent. The ANC Youth League leader was always known as a radical who wasn't afraid to speak out about the dire living conditions of many South Africans. But he was also full of contradictions. A working class hero wearing designer suits and driving expensive cars, taking his example from other leaders of the ANC, who'd become increasingly removed from the people. The kind of extravagance that now from reports you are being associated with seems to undermine your credibility talking on behalf of ordinary people. I represent the poor yeah. and I'm elected by the poor because I come from a poor background. Okay, but you can't say you are poor if you own a C63. No, I'm very poor compared to those who own the means of production. Ten years earlier, when Malema was still a member of the ANC, He'd been one of the main supporters of Jacob Zuma, lobbying to get him elected as ANC leader. Zuma went on to become South Africa's president in 2009. Both Malema and Zuma were working class men, popular with the poor majority. But Zuma was dogged by charges of raping a colleague's daughter and by serious accusations of corruption. Malema stood by him throughout his 2006 rape trial and subsequent acquittal. Even when he was accused of corruption, Zuma was called the people's president. Anybody else in government who think can undermine Zuma must know will be removed. We are prepared to die for him. We are prepared 
to take up arms and kill Bozuma. Thank you very much. But the people's president didn't deliver. Under Zuma, the gap between rich and poor widened even further. South Africa was looking at some of the worst inequality in the world. And two years into Zuma's presidency, Malema's relationship with the president began to deteriorate. The radical youth league leader was a constant thorn in the leadership's side. We talk about the pain we are going through. We don't read about poverty. We lived poverty. We are children of domestic workers. We know what it means to go home and don't find a meal. We live that life every day and we're asking for leadership. We're going to a war, comrade. A war for radical policy shift. And you're not going to win it through rhetoric. Youth, you must be everywhere in the structures of the ANC. Malema was unsettling those at the top, and the ANC repeatedly warned him to rein himself in. It wasn't long ago that he said that he would die for President Zuma. That <laughs> seems to have shifted a little bit since then. <laughs> <laughs> so, my question to you is, what are your feelings towards the Youth League president? <laughs> In early 2012, Malema's close relationship with Zuma finally shattered, and he was permanently expelled from the ANC. Malema was devastated. My blood is black, green and gold. I will never form a political party. Neither would I take a posture that seeks to oppose the African National Congress. I will never do that. I will die ANC. I don't need a card to be ANC. I'm born African National Congress. I will die African National Congress. Back then, he was not ready to give up on the idea of the ANC. But six months later, the Marikana massacre happened and Malema did a complete about turn and announced the launch of the Economic Freedom Fighters. This is a socialist program. This is a socialist program which is unstoppable. This party will change the lives of black people. It was as if he was declaring war on his former party, the ANC. Political organizations that have led uh, the uh, decolonization process usually reach a coup de sac. 20, 25 years after they have come to power. Um, this is the moment when new generations that had, had nothing to do with the struggle begin to uh, emerge on the social scene as social protagonists in their own, on their own terms. This is also a moment when old crises that have not been resolved uh, are uh, festering, and to them are added new crises. And both the new and old crises are set on a collision course. The economic freedom fighters is a radical, militant, and revolutionary... Malema's EFF was widely criticized for being idealistic and radical. But its policies were not that different from the ANC back when it was still a liberation movement. One of those is the expropriation of the South Africa's land without compensation for equal redistribution. The nationalization of mines, banks and other... Malema was stepping into some of the grassroots political space that the ANC seemed to have neglected. And while many ordinary people were suffering, fresh corruption scandals emerged involving President Zuma and $18 million of public money spent on upgrading his private family residence in Inkandla. All of this was ammunition for Malema. 250-something million on one man. Here in Soweto, the children are still using the desk which were given to them by apartheid regime. Till today, you ask yourself, 
How many desks can 250 something million buy? My name is being used wrongly. My family is being undermined. Even by the very honorable members who don't ask, who don't ask as to what actually happened. And I feel very aggrieved, I must tell you for the first time. I've been convicted, painted black, called the first class corrupt man on facts that are not tested. I take exception. Zuma's and Kandla scandal came to worldwide attention when the public protector, Tuli Madonsela, released a damning report in 2014. Her agency had been specifically set up under the South African Constitution to guard against state abuse of democracy. And her report on Nkandla ignited the fuel of Malema's opposition to the ANC. It is common cause that in the name of security, government built for the president and his family in his private residence, a visitor center, a cattle crawl, a chicken run, a swimming pool, and an amphitheater, among others. The president and his family clearly benefited from this. When should you pay back the money and how much? The public protector made recommendations, and the recommendations are recommendations, are not verdicts. Recommendations are recommendations, subject to be taken or not taken, if they are recommendations. Despite the public protector's investigation and outcries from Malema and millions of others, the police minister dismissed the public protector's report. The state president is therefore not liable to pay for any of these security features. Nobody in the ANC seemed willing to hold the president to account. For many months, Malema and his opposition party questioned and interrupted President Zuma every single time he spoke in Parliament. But when in February 2015, the annual State of the Nation address was due, Zuma was determined that nobody would interrupt him, whatever that took. The year 2015 marks 60 years of a historic moment in our history, when South Africans from all walks of life adopted the Freedom Charter in 1955 and uh, clipped Madam out Speaker. Soweto, Madam they Speaker. declared, amongst others, that Madam South Speaker, Africa belongs to all who live in it, a question of privilege. black and white, and that no government can just Madam claim Speaker, authority in terms of unless rule it is based can the I be on the will of all the people. Honorable President, I'm sorry to interrupt your speech. Uh, if the President would not mind just taking a seat so we can listen Thank to you. this honorable member's point of order. May we uh, ask the president as to when he is going to pay the money in terms of what the public protector has said? This house has to proceed with the business of the State of the Nation address being delivered today. Which rule are you using, honorable my honorable speaker? speaker? Which honorable. rule are you using honorable. to deny members to raise a point of order? They are protected I, by the I rules. Am now you cannot be emotional about honorable it. Honorable Point Julius, as the rule which gives you powers Julius, to deny us point honorable of order. Honorable Malema, I now have to ask that you leave the chamber. I'm not going to leave, Chair. I'm rising on if the point of order. If you are not leaving the chamber, I'm not working for you. I have I'm not here on your invitation. That I'm you elected are to be here. Never. I'm not going to leave. I'm elected to be here. We belong here. We want to speak. We are appealing to your conscience. I also order the security officers to please assist. Members of the NC 
CRP, take your seats, take your seats. We cannot simply allow for police to be allowed to enter this chamber. It is a grave constitutional violation. We want to be here to get the State of the Nation address, but we cannot violate this constitution of the people of this country by allowing the police in this chamber. We can't accept that. I'd like clarity on that matter, Adam Speaker. There is no way I could sit in here be able to pick out who is police and who is not police here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Let me start where I was interrupted from. Mm. <laughs> That's what happens in South Africa. When people raise legitimate questions, they are assaulted, police are called upon to assault them, to arrest them. And we are really happy with the courage of the DA that they took a stand against turning parliament into a police state. That day, the ANC showed its hand. It was prepared to repress the opposition when challenged, even within the walls of parliament. Where would things go from here in the battle between Julius Malema and the ANC? In the years between the shocking Marikana massacre of 2012 and the critical local elections of 2016, South Africa's Party of Liberation, the ANC, faced some of its most intense opposition from the newest leader on the bloc, Julius Malema. Himself, a former ANC youth leader, Malema set up the Economic Freedom Fighters to represent the vast and poor majority of black South Africans many of whom were feeling increasingly abandoned by the ANC. You must say to those who want your vote that if you don't implement our interest, we are going to take you out of government. When Nelson Mandela died in 2013, there were strong signs that many people were losing the respect they once had for the ANC. At the memorial service, watched by millions across the world, President Jacob Zuma was booed every time his face appeared on the big screen. Worsening social conditions for the majority of South Africans, coupled with allegations of corruption surrounding Zuma, added to a perception that the ANC had abandoned its commitment to ending inequality. While Julius Malema's radical new party was shaking things up for the ANC, Zuma was already getting challenged about corruption by the existing Liberal Opposition Party, the Democratic Alliance. The DA. The simple answer that we get from Mr. Zuma every, to every single allegation is simply this, it wasn't me. 
You see, when the Guptas were landing at Vatarkluf, the answer was, it wasn't me. When the millions were spent on Nkandla, it wasn't me. When there was a failure to comply with the public protector's report, it wasn't me. When, in fact, a four billion luxury presidential jet, it wasn't me. In fact, the push to sign off on a trillion rand nuclear deal, it wasn't me. In fact, when the Gupta brothers were offering cabinet posts, ah, it wasn't me. Malema jumped at the opportunity to unite with the DA, despite criticizing them in the past for being pro-white capitalist. Together, his EFF party and the DA took President Zuma to the Constitutional Court over the Nkandla corruption scandal. This joint show of force against the ANC was a test of the very democracy it had fought for. Had the president violated the constitution by overriding the public protector? reasons why the EFF is here is to establish once and for all that the public protector may make binding orders. She has explained to you how um, the effectiveness of the, her office has essentially collapsed since the president made the point in parliament that her reports are mere recommendations. We say that we accept that the president uh, is required to carry out the remedial action. We accept it's not just a recommendation. She wanted certain things done, and the undertaking is that those things should be done because they must be done. What is it that has been asked for that you disagree with? <laughs> The remedial action taken by the public protector against President Jacob Gelehle Zuma in terms of Section 182.1c of the Constitution is binding. The President thus failed to uphold, defend, and respect the Constitution as the supreme law of the land. The President violated the Constitution by not implementing the remedial actions of the public protector, which are binding constitutionally, he violated the constitution. Following the constitutional court judgment in early 2016, there were loud calls for Zuma to step down, but the ANC united behind him. The president is not going to be removed by anybody from office. The ANC was under pressure and particularly worried about losing its comfortable majority in the big cities. The 2016 local elections were just months away and they promised to be the most competitive in South Africa's post-apartheid history. Malema's EFF was already organizing hard in the outskirts of the urban areas, amongst the most marginalized people, places like the shanty town of Kailicha in Cape Town. The big issues there were lack of land and housing. Why would this South Africa belong to us when we have nothing to show that this South Africa belongs to us? If we continue with this pattern in 20 years, of freedom would have transferred only less than 5% of the land. People are killed in this place. There are children raped and dumped here. Most crimes are done here. So rather people, um, I'd rather say people must build and stay here than having more deaths and more rapes in this place. So I think the government should let us use this place. Aye. Aye. In the lead-up to the 2016 elections, illegal shack dwellers resisted evictions in Kyalitsha and were met with the government's iron fist. Memories of Marikana were only four years old. Then 
<laughs> so if the police in to the people, we need to talk to build them, okay? So I think you are here to prepare that. After this thing, there is a citizen delivery in good standing. Then after that, the government will need to build the properly houses here. We will build till we stay here. This land belongs to us, so we're going to build here. I'm not afraid of that. If you want something, you stand for it, you fight for it. You fight for what you know is right. As protests continued to spread and increase in intensity, Malema shifted his focus from corruption at the top to issues affecting the youth. The perception was that the ANC had broken its promise to provide free education to the poor as a way out of poverty. Like the ANC, the EFF now had student groups on university campuses across the country. The EFF's clarity about supporting the student call for free quality education was resonating with a growing radicalism. The number of students here at VUT has dropped. Yeah. Has dropped because students were excluded, particularly those who didn't have money. It cannot be a prerequisite for a person to have to pay money before you get education. Education is not a commodity. Education is a birthright. When at the end of 2015, the government announced a university fee increase, the campuses revolted. The Fees Must Fall movement included the issues of campus worker exploitation, all of which chimed with Malema's politics. EFF and ANC student activists said the fight for access to education was more important than old party allegiances. Student struggle spoke loudly to Malema's politics, but it was far bigger than him. Seventeen universities joined the national shutdown. When we entered Mandela Bridge, when we were crossing Mandela, in the midst of Mandela Bridge, that structure started shaking. For some reason, that moment was quite telling for me. I felt like Mandela's rainbow nation, Mandela's sort of, you know, false vision was now about to crumble. That, you know, perhaps we are the generation that is about to give the real vision that this country needs. We are here. Demand one free and quality education in our lifetime. Yeah. Do not have fear in your hearts. Do not have doubt in your minds. What you are doing, you are doing for the future. Do not be intimidated by doubts. They have killed us before in Marikana. We cannot die again. During the last 20 years, the debate was about the present and the past. The current debate, the one that is emerging when one listens to especially young people, students, uh, protesters, and so forth and so on, is about the future. What kind of future do we want to uh, create? And uh, in the name of that future, why is it important to destroy 
the existing uh, dispensation. Students took the fight to the gates of parliament, hoping to get the ear of government. Instead, they were met with tear gas and rubber bullets. Again, the state chose violence over negotiation. Protests culminated in a massive march on the seat of government, where the president was, with students united across the political spectrum. The president had planned to come out, but shaken by the united crowd on his front lawn, he decided not to. What the students later learned was the president had made a decision not to increase fees this year. The students had forced the hand of a government that seemed intransigent. But what would the new grassroots movements that represent an impatience for change mean for the party that has always dominated. With local elections on the horizon, we were about to find out. The ANC can remain majority party in these local government elections in 2016, but the biggest upset is going to be losing just one of the metros. Rebellion, revolution, counter movements, they always find cities as the most fertile ground uh, to mount challenges to the status quo. There's already a conscientized kind of populace uh, residing in the city. In the weeks leading up to the local elections, tensions became increasingly bloody. Violence broke out between ANC factions vying for leadership positions. In the capital, Shwane, the ANC imposed a mayoral candidate on its local branches, and all hell broke loose. Five people were killed. Julius Malema's campaign was also threatened. Several opposition parties were attacked when canvassing in ANC areas, including two EFF members who were murdered. Protect our right to campaign. When Malema went to visit the area, he too was confronted by people who didn't want the EFF there. We saw it in action today. Journalists were beaten with stones and, and, and nobkiris in front of police. It's not an exaggeration. In front of police. What happens? Police run for cover and they say, no, let's take Malema out. You're not taking everyone out. You only take Malema and then the rest of those people must die. The ANC was on the back foot. Worried about widening opposition, it spent record amounts of money appealing to voters to stay loyal to the Party of Liberation. ANC, 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 
yatiwa abatendezele kuti sichupheke tina pati abamnyamo Lona Halisebet, Zuma Umkile Telete, we nailed the cold. Wena, how na a flashing toilet, the Kobuta Zuma di Wambe, in a three million swimming pool. How voter today, how does Hamba no Mandela, or Hamba no Zuma? After a tumultuous campaign period, on 3rd of August 2016, South Africans went to the polls in this major test of the ANC's political legitimacy. We need education, we need the houses, they say the better services. A lot of um, the youth are trying to make a change and want a change by actually being given a different, you know, option. As the votes were counted, all eyes were on the big cities, the metros. Would the ANC hold on to their majority? We are 22 years into democracy. And it's the ANC that brought democracy into our country. We are confident that come the last counting hour, we will emerge victorious in Tswane, in Johannesburg and at the But when the results came in, they were devastating for the ruling party, worse than any of us could have possibly imagined. Nationally, the ANC had lost 8% of the vote. The party was defeated in four of the five biggest cities. It lost the capital, Schwane, as well as Johannesburg, the financial heartland of the country. The Democratic Alliance increased its share of the black vote. It was neck and neck with the ANC for the first time in several cities. We've done well, now we've got to do more. Can we fix the pipes? Can we make sure the sewages work? Can we make sure jobs are created? Can we cut corruption? We deliver those things, that's a focus. And Julius Malema also had his day. In many municipalities, there was no decisive winner. So the EFF, the third largest party, found itself in a unique position of holding the deciding vote on practically every decision the councils had to make, including which of the two main parties would lead. We'll vote for the opposition because the ANC must be removed from power. And this is the start of removing the ANC from power. We can't be neutral. If we are neutral, we are sellouts, we are cowards. It means we don't want to take a stand. We've taken a stand and we're going to vote for the opposition. DA must know our voting for them in this metros does not mean we are in bed together. They are a better divin compared to the ANC. For me, Witnessing this shift in the political landscape after 22 years of democracy, and especially since the Marikana killings, was momentous. The ANC, that had led the liberation struggle, was being challenged for not delivering on what it had promised. The next elections will take place in 2019, and the ANC may well lose their majority to new voices from the grassroots of society. Democracy is a contest, and it's a perennial contest. And what we are seeing in South Africa is that the power of the ruling party is being contested. 
and it will be contested more and more and more as we go forward. There will be cost to it, but I don't think the other players are going to give up. The media is not going to give up. The judiciary is not going to give up. The, the other political parties are not going to give up. They are preparing for a, for a long haul. Julius Malema's EFF, though small, is growing precisely because it's attracting those who feel let down by the ANC and are impatient for change. As we look towards the 2019 elections, the EFF has to convince the nation it is a respectable parliamentary party, while remaining relevant to those who are taking things into their own hands. In the ongoing battle of Julius Malema versus the ANC, the question of whether it's possible for Julius to lead both a constitutional party and be a revolutionary remains to be seen.